We are studying the book of Shmuel Bet, uh, the second book of Shmuel. We are in the beginning of chapter 5, very beginning. Um, and um, we, arrived at, uh, we arrived here uh, where the house of Saul uh, is no longer um, ruling. Uh, the, the, the last uh, survivor king of, of the house of Shaul, uh, his name is Ishboshet. Uh, his son was killed in a terrible, gruesome, disgusting way by people who thought uh, the, David is going to like that uh, gesture, and uh, which he didn't. Um, and that's it. So, I mean, there is no, there is no king. The, the only... There are a couple of kids, grandkids of, of Shaul uh, running around. The, uh, the only one that's really going to be known in a serious way was the, uh, the son of uh, Yonatan, who is uh, five, uh, is seven years old now, something of that nature. A kid and he's crippled, he's, la uh, he's lame, he's not, he's not, uh, he's not uh, material for kings, you know. Um, so the rest of the country uh, realized that uh, the, the house of Shaul is no more. And uh, it took them five years to realize that maybe it's time to, uh, to join forces and rally behind David. And this is what they're doing now. So they all are coming. All of the tribes of the Jewish people, all the Jewish tribes came to David, to the city of Hebron, came on David Hebrona, and they all came and they said, we are your flesh and blood. Strange, right? Why would you come to a, to a rally in Washington and say, we are your flesh and blood? It's, it, it makes no sense. So what's, what's going on here? So first, um, we mentioned last time that there is a whole description, uh, a much more elaborate description of what happened and who came in the in the book of chronicles uh and over there they are actually enumerating excuse me all of the tribes uh, all of the tribes and how many each one of them how many people each one of them sent and what kind of people some of them sent the soldiers some of them sent the leaders some of them sent the judges some of, some of them and and depending on and which tribe it was, um, they were uh, more enthusiastic or less enthusiastic about um, coming to this inauguration. Um, and, uh, you know, if they were more enthusiastic, they obviously sent more people. Um, the tribe of Benjamin, which is the tribe of Saul, of Shaul, also sent people, is the closest one, the, clo the, the, the next door neighbor, literally, um, they, um, they sent 3,000 people, which is a small number, uh, the smallest number, I believe. And, uh, and the reason they, they sent so little is because they still had in the back of their mind, because the grandchildren of Shaul were alive, that maybe, 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 maybe someone is going to eventually take, uh, you know, uh, become a king again. Uh, but obviously that was not, uh, definitely not in the immediate uh, future. So they also came and joined. Now, the tribes of the, uh, the other side of the Jordan River, uh, Ruven and Gad and the half of Menashe, they sent 120,000 people. It's a lot of people, a lot of men. The northern tribes, um, starting with uh, Naphtali, and uh, Issachar, and Zvulun, and uh, Gad, and Dan, they all send also a lot of people. Um, the tribe of Issachar, which were uh, known to be the, the leaders, the scholars, the rabbis, they sent everybody. I mean, the entire tribe came over uh, and made the, 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 the trip to, uh, to the inauguration to Hebron. And... Zvulun, which is the uh, the pair, Yisachar and Zvulun are a pair, right? They had this uh, agreement that Yisachar is going to be learning Torah and Zvulun is going to be paying the bills. And uh, they're both going to split the merit of the Torah that uh, Yisachar is learning. They're going to split it 
So Zvulun, um, they were the, the, one of the richest uh, tribes because they were, uh, they were merchants. They, they, they were sailors, they were, in the, they were uh, occupying the, uh, uh, they, were, they were living next to, to a port, to a seaport, and they dealt with all of the merchandise that are coming from overseas. Uh, they were very, very wealthy, and they were very, very ecstatic because they knew, they recognized the value of David, the value of, of his ability to, uh, the respect that the people of the world have uh, to, towards him. And um, they saw it uh, increase in, uh, in traffic, increase in trade, increase in, in uh, economic activity. Um, and they really appreciated him from a whole different uh, perspective uh, and and uh, so they sent fifty thousand people. That's the the largest uh, the, the largest contingent of, of, of people. It's from the tribe of uh, Zvulun. Total number of people about four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand men uh, came to Hebron, and they were hosted very nicely by the tribe of Judah. Tribe of Judah were hosting them for three days. So imagine two or three meals a day for three days that, you know, a couple million meals, you know, they, they hosted them free, free of charge. Um, and they made a big, big, huge party. And uh, that was the party that, uh, that was the time five years after um, the, the last king of, of Shaul uh, was killed. It's time to move on. It's a whole term, right? Five years. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of time. It's time to move on. So what are they coming and saying to him? They're saying, we are your flesh and blood. Why? What? What's going on? So we might remember that the, the tribe, the, the, uh, uh, David's great-grandmother was Ruth, right? And Ruth was a Moabite. And there, there is a, a very strict prohibition in the Torah to not uh, marry a Moabite, to not, uh, they, they're not even allowed to be uh, converted. And, but the law is that this is all true for Moabite men. Moabite women are allowed to convert. So, but that halakha was not well known. So people were talking, you know, that here Ishai is from that, uh, uh, from uh, the, the, David's father had a, was a very, uh, very famous guy, very respected, um, very amazing Torah scholar, but he was the grandson of Ruth. So they said, you know, it's not, uh, it's not fully Jewish, you know, it's not. Uh... So David came from that, and um, right away, that was the word that the the uh, advisors of Shaul were spreading around, bad mouthing David. Um, but the halacha is that that's not true. That there is no, absolutely no problem. So what they came and said to him, listen, we know that there was a lot of fake news going on about your lineage. You are our flesh and blood. We are your flesh and blood. We are one family. We're one people. Don't worry about this, uh, this, this bad mouthing, this halacha. We all know and recognize it. And so that's number one, qualification number one. You're, you're, you know, in order to be the king of the Jews, you need to be Jewish, right? גם אתמול, גם שלשום, ביות שאול מלך עלינו, yesterday, גם before, long before now, you know, yesterday and before, um, uh, שאול, when he was uh, king over us, אתה היית מוציא, המוציא והמביא את ישראל. You were the one who led in war, coming and going, obviously, everybody recognized the contribution that he made uh, at this point, it was uh, seven, eight years ago, eight years ago when he killed Goliath, right? Or seven and a half years ago. Uh, everybody is recognizing that uh, that contribution of his. And um, more than seven and a half years, it's about 10 years, 10 years ago. And um, they, um, they all, uh, they're all saying, you know, it's not, you were fighting for us, you were fighting with us. You were the, the guy that led us in war. And, and indeed, the word uh, got out that uh, Shmuel promised him and, and, and uh, anointed him as a king. 
So, um, so uh, Hashem spoke through uh, Shmuel's mouth and told him that you are going to be the shepherd. You're going to be the shepherd uh, for the Jewish people. Uh, what's the point of a shepherd? We know that Moshe Rabbeinu was a shepherd, um, and uh, the, the the brothers, the twelve tribes, were were the, 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 were shepherds. Um, a shepherd has a very interesting quality to them. You know, they they care. They care about every. Uh, uh, every sheep and every goat and every calf and uh, you know the, the the weak and the meek and the uh, the strong and they they know how to uh, to deal with the, each one of them uh, and uh, you know it's a very relaxing job uh, to be a shepherd um, you know so you know if you guys are having some for high you high strong I, I highly recommend you know um, so. The point is that the the um, uh, test of Moshe Rabbeinu, how do how did we Hashem knew that he is ready to to lead the Jewish people because he was a good shepherd. So here they came and say the the job of David before he was taken uh, was uh, was called to uh, to help Shaul in the war. Um, he was a shepherd. So you're going to be a shepherd with us as well, and you're going to be soft with us again they are hedging because they gave him a hard time so david did not rise to power you know when uh, with a silver spoon uh, in his mouth um he he was uh, he was struggling all along and it was just a normal uh, course of action that if uh, people are driving you crazy when you rise to power you uh, you retaliate uh and and they were uh setting up the the uh, the stage for an agreement between them and David. David never thought that he to didn't cross his mind, but they wouldn't know that. So, uh, but so they set the stage. Let's have a treaty. Let's have a. You're gonna be our our leader. You're gonna lead us. But you know, take it easy. You know, be nice. And you're gonna be our leader. Now, Nagid, it's a funny word mentioned before. Uh, at the time of Shaul, um, Nagid is equal to king, but it's not a king. It does the same job, but it's not really a king. No royalty there. Um, so they're saying, you're gonna, they didn't say you're going to be our king. They, you're going to be our leader. Um, why did they say that? They said it because they felt wounded and they were leaking uh, their wounds, so, so to speak, from the time with Shaul. Shaul was a you know was not uh, was not a success, successful king um caused a lot of uh, rift and a lot of problems and uh, no uh, didn't he did win uh, several wars and brought some uh, temporary relief but over time uh, after uh, after he passed away uh, what's left was not uh, what's not exciting so they didn't want to say and 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 they understood they they remembered that Shmuel did not really promote and like the the job of a king. Uh, Jews don't need really kings, you know. We we need leaders, but not kings. Kings is a is not a uh, is not a structure that uh, that's really so uh, unless unless God selects the king. But if we select the king, it's not really a structure that works for us uh, very well. So they didn't use that word, even though they basically offered him the position. Now, what does David do? David was already inaugurated by Shmuel, right? So he's already the de facto king, but now it's time to, uh, to deal with the, uh, with the crowd. Um, so even though he had 400,000 people outside his door chanting, you know, and, 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 and uh, rallying and, and supporting and, and celebrating the fact that he is going to lead us, um, he didn't really sign on the dotted line. Yeah, he, he didn't. Uh, he didn't accept until Israel Until the elders of Zion, the elder of Israel, came to uh, the king Hebrona, and with them, what does the elders mean? The elders means is the, the base din, is Sanhedrin, is the rabbis, is the the leaders of the uh, the, the halachic leaders of the community. They are the ones that are halachically required and entitled to select the king. It's not, 
we don't have a democratic, uh, you know, way of living. The Torah is not a democratic uh, book, you know. It's it's uh, so so the democracy. what? It's not a democracy. Yeah, it's a, we 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 have very strict rules on how to uh, how to run the show, and it's not democracy, and not even a republic. So <laughs> so they they. Uh, so the elders of Zion, the elders of uh, the, 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 the rabbis, the Sanhedrin, when they came and when they offered their support, then he said, all right, let's go. That, that, that I can take, that I can, I, I can, I can work with that. David Brit Bechevron. So he signed the treaty, he signed, signed the, they signed together an, an agreement. in a, in the, the area where they were studying and where they had the, the, the court in Hebron in a, in a holy place. And they set up the rules. They set up the rules of how this kingdom going to run. And then they inaugurated, anointed him, and he became a, a, a de facto a, a, a king of, of all of us forever. This is the moment that he became an official king till the end of time. And where, where in Hebron, near the cave of Machpelah or elsewhere? So Hebron was a small city and um, the, the, they had near the cave of Machpelah there was a, 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 a plaza, a piazza. And that's where, uh, that's where they ride outside of the, the gate, right inside of the gates of Hebron. That's where they... Uh, that's where that's where they were they were around, you know. That's that that's the area that uh, the archaeologists are, are saying, uh, you know, is where the old city was. You have over there the uh, the, the 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 grave of Ishai, the father of David. You have the grave of Avner uh, that we saw a few uh, verses ago that was killed and, and buried over there. So Ben Shloshim Shana David Ben Molcho Arbaim Shana Malach. So David the Melech was thirty years old when he became a king, and the total time that he was ruling was forty years. Um, just to understand what, how he grew up, what happened here, when he was seventeen, he he was born at the time of Eli. Eli is the 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 last uh, the, the 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 last judge uh, the, that is mentioned, which is uh, in the beginning of, of the book of uh, Shmuel Aleph, the first book of Shmuel, Eli. So he was born in the at the time of Eli, and when he was seventeen ish, uh, David. Uh, this is when uh, Eli died, and the the, the the Philistines captured the um, the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, and he. Um, lived through that experience, the, one of the most difficult experiences, uh, the periods of time in, in the, the time of the judges. And that's what made him who he was. And, and he experienced the, the rise and fall of Shaul. Um, and now he is, he, is, uh, he is the one in charge. And uh, there is, even though we're just starting uh, you know, to talk about the, 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 the period of his uh, kingdom, they have already saw so a promo. He he would be king for forty years, and they uh, the listing uh, the individual time that he was um, in the different. Uh, he he had two um, uh, two st uh, cities that he ruled in. Uh, he ruled in Hebron. Be Hebron, Malach al Yehuda Sheva Shanim veShisha Chodashim. He was a king in Hebron seven and a half years. Very strange that they they mentioning the half year. Usually it's the rounding it up, you know. Um, in most cases, they're rounding it up. Only when you have somebody who was a king for three months, so you said it was three months because it was, you know, it wasn't a year. But uh, to and it's the second time that it's mentioned seven and a half years. We'll talk about the the, the half in a second. So seven and a half years. Ubi Rushalayim alach shloshim veshalosh anayin. In in Jerusalem, he was uh, three, thirty-three years. Al kol Israel veYehuda, and he was a king over all. Of, of all of the Jewish uh, uh, people, uh, including Yehuda. Um, so what is this six months? So the, the rabbis, are the, the commentaries are, are discussing it. And uh, they're mentioning uh, that the six years are either, it's, um, you know, they're rounding it up, that the six years 
are included in the 33, so it's really seven and a half years and 32 and a half years. That's one explanation, the most common one. But there are those who say that six years he had problems and he wasn't considered a king. So in the 33 years, there was these six months that he was not really a king. There is one opinion that says that after his, uh, the, situ the, the, the event that happened with Bacheva, which we will learn soon uh, all about, that he, uh, he, he uh, made a mistake and then paid the price uh, for it um, and, and repented uh, properly. But uh, he became, uh, uh, he got leprosy. He, he was a leopard for, for six months. Uh, what? Leper, right? Uh, for six months. In that six months, he was not considered a king. That's one option. And another option is that during the war uh, that his son of Shalom uh, started against him, that he was not a king because his, his son took the, the throne in the middle. So... So they're mentioning the six months several times uh, here and before we mentioned because it's, uh, it was a significant, it's a significant amount, but they don't seem to agree exactly why. Um, so, Vayelech HaMelech Ve'anashav Yerushalayim Ela Yevusi Yoshev Ha'aretz So the first thing, the first action that David HaMelech is doing once he became an official king of all of the Jewish people, he was seven and a half king, uh, years king of, of, of just the tribe of Yehuda. But when he took the throne, he took the, the reign for the entire Jewish people, the first thing that he does is what? Is going and conquering Yerushalayim. And that is something that uh, is worth discussing at length. So they, the, the, the king and his men uh, went to Yerushalayim. This is the nation that was sitting, that was uh, occupying uh, growing up, the, 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 that's, that was their place, Yerushalayim. Yosheva Aretz, they, they, that's the, their natural uh, place from, from time immemorial, and we'll see since when in a second. So they, uh, they told him, they shoot him away. Go away. You're not going to come here. And this is a very strange verse. Uh, we will mention. We will talk at length about what it means in a second. Uh, I'll just read the translation. You will never get in here. Even the blind and the lame will turn you by, back. What, what in the what in the world are we talking about here? So let's let's just take a little bit of a step back because we have a lot to discuss here. So first of all, when did Yerushalayim become Yerushalayim? When what is this city? When is the city from? So the city is going back, the first time that the city is mentioned is at the time of Avraham, okay? Um, in Parashat Lech Lecha, the third parasha, um, Avraham was, uh, Lot, his, his nephew, was captured in a war, and he went and he captured back, the, he killed the kings, the, the four kings versus the five kings, and he killed them, and, and uh, uh, rescued his nephew. And um, several other people, and uh, and uh, then he met the ruler of the city of Yerushalayim, Malkitzedek Melech Shalem. Malkitzedek, that's that's the name of the guy. Malkitzedek is the king of Shalem. What is Shalem? Unkelus. Unkelus is the the translation to Aramaic that uh, that's uh, printed in uh, most of the Chumashim. He translated as follows: Malkitzedek Malka di Yerushalayim. The, the king of Yerushalayim. So this is the first time that Yerushalayim is, is mentioned in the Torah, at the time of Abraham. We are, we are, um, what, a thousand years later? <laughs> Another thousand? Yeah, about a thousand years later. Um, now, the, Ram, the Ramban is mentioning on, on the Pasuk, I mean, why are we mentioning the, 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 the city of Shalem, of Yerushalayim? at that point, he mentions it because it seems that everyone felt at that time the holiness of that city. And that's why Malkitzedek, the, uh, it says, who Kohen Le'el who is who is, he was a priest, he was a Kohen, uh, you know, for, for, for the nations. Um, they felt already at that time how special the place is, 
and, and, and people were flocking from all over the place to Yerushalayim for spiritual reasons. So it's not, uh, it's not, a, new, it's not a new thing. So the Ram, Ramban is saying that it's clearly um, uh, it's something that the, 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 the nations knew and they, they, they felt it is a special place. So now, so that's, that's at the time of, of, of uh, Abraham. Now, let's mention something else from Abraham. So we, we know that Yerushalayim is an important place. Now, who are the Yevusites, the Yevusim? The Yevusites uh, are, uh, are, are uh, the, the great-grandkids of Avimelech. Avimelech was a king at the time of, uh, of, David, of uh, Avraham. Uh, we recall the, the Avraham went there and he took his wife, uh, Avimelech took Sarai's, uh, uh, Avraham's wife, and then he became sick and Avraham uh, prayed for him and uh, rescued uh, Sarah and uh, got her back. After Avimel, after the, um, uh, uh, the, the story of, of after um, Avraham had a child, uh, a second child, Yitzchak, when he was 100 years old, and after he kicked out of his house his own son, Ishmael, at the age of 13, 15, 13, 15, because he was uh, playing around, uh, he, was, uh, he, he was a bad influence on Yitzchak. Um, so after that story, there is a section in Torah that mentions the, the influence, that the, the impression that, Av that the Avraham made on all of the surrounding nations, and that caused the nation of Avimelech, the Avimelech and, 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 his, and uh, his nation, to strike a deal, to, to sign a peace treaty with Abraham. That's the first peace treaty to mention in the Torah, and the most devastating one. So, um, so by, right, it, it says, uh, we read it on every Rosh Hashanah, they, they came to Abraham and they told Abraham, God is with you, and now we want to sign a peace treaty with you, and we, we, we want you to promise us that you're going to uh, keep the peace treaty not only with us, but also with our grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And then he lived in Be'er Sheva, and, and it says that this, they struck the deal in Be'er Sheva. Now, let's fast forward um, a few years, Isaac, Isaac also re-signed the same priest peace treaty with Avimelech. Avimelech came to him and says, you know, your father signed a deal with us, why don't you ratify it? And Yitzchak uh, agreed, and he ratified the peace treaty and continued the peace with, the, with those people. Two weeks ago, we read in the Torah, Vayetze Yaakov mi Be'er Shava Vayelech Harana, that Yaakov exited. He needed to run away from Esau, right, from Esau, who wanted to, uh, that pl had plans to kill him because he stole his, uh, his first, the, 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 the right of, right, the birthright. The birthright. Um, but he could have gone in uh, all different, many different directions. But he exited the place, and he ran away to a far, far away place, where the, ra the rabbis, the, the madras is saying that one of the reasons that he ran away from Be'er Sheva is because he didn't want to ever sign a deal and to ratify the same peace treaty that his father and grandfather, Isaac and Avraham, that they signed with Avimelech. He felt that this is wrong, it's not going to lead to anything good, and he wanted nothing to do with it, and he didn't want to sign a deal. And because of that, he left Be'er Sheva. He, didn't, he never came back to Be'er Sheva to, to live in a serious way, because he didn't want to be close to Avimelech and be faced with the, um, you know, Avimelech can, uh, can come, and if Avimelech is strong, tell him, you know, why don't you ratify the deal? 
and uh, sort of force him even to, to ratify the deal, uh, the peace treaty. And this is the, the interesting point here. There is tremendous criticism for over Avraham and Isaac for signing the deal with Avimelech. And um, there, there are seven generations from Avraham to the time of Moshe, an eighth generation till the time that we got into the land of Israel. So it's Avraham one, Isaac two, Yaakov three, his son Levi four, his son Kehat five, his son Amram six, and Moshe Rabbeinu is seven. Seven generation. It took seven generation for for because we signed the deal with the wrong uh, uh, with the wrong people, we didn't get the right to go back to the land of Israel for seven generations, and the ratification that uh, that Yitzchak added to it added another generation. So we actually did not go into the land of Israel at the time of of Moshe. We had to wait to another generation till the time of of Yeshua to go to the land of Israel. So the, there is tremendous discussion here, discussions about what was wrong with signing a deal with them. And if there is nothing wrong with signing a deal with them, why did Yaakov was so afraid that he ran away from, from the land of Israel, the land ran away, so he's not going to be forced to, to, to sign a deal. And if it's so bad, how come his ancestors did sign the deal? What's going on here? So there is a very interesting um, uh, discussion. Uh, the Lubavitch Rebbe is, is, is talking the, the whole uh, uh, section about it. In, in uh, 66, he, he, he mentioned uh, a whole discussion explaining um, that the way Avraham and Yitzchak were functioning is totally different than the way Yaakov was functioning. Avraham and Yitzchak, even in their own home, were not perfect. What does he mean? Avraham gave birth to Ishmael, who is one of the, the, the greatest uh, hater of, uh, of the Jewish people of all times, his, 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 uh, his children. And um, Yitzchak, Isaac, gave birth to Esau, which is Edom, which is also um, the, the, the haters, uh, very, very bad enemies of the Jewish people for, for many, many, many generations. Uh, and it all came from their, their own home. So their own home was not complete. The home of Yaakov, however, he had 12 sons, and they were all okay. They were all part of us. They were all part of the nation. None of them, you know, went off the, the beaten path in, in a way that they, like, you know, exited the, uh, exited the, 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 the family. Um, and his whole way of functioning is is that he was able to take everything, all, the, all of his surroundings, and make them good, and elevate them to a higher spiritual level. Abraham and Yitzchak were able to sign peace deals, treaties. They were able to, to appease the, the, the enemy and, and to keep them at bay, but not convert them to good. Yaakov converted them to good. Everything, everybody who was uh, had was in touch with Yaakov was converted to good, or was totally rejected. But never, um, was, I don't want to say wishy-washy, but like middle way of you know you keep you keep your evil ways, but we're gonna have a peace treaty. That did not work with Yaakov at all, and that's the reason that he couldn't he couldn't sign the deal, and. That is something to teach us. The, the rabbis are mentioning that, uh, you know, it's unfortunately it's coming again and again and again. It's a, a bad deal is, is, is worse than an old deal. Um, they, they know absolutely not to sign deals with, with people that we know are enemies now. Uh, they never, the, the Philistines never kept their part of the bargain. They never... They were tremendous, they, they, they were hundreds of years, they caused us tremendous uh, trouble and terror and death and, and uh, tremendous disasters. All because of that deal that was signed at the time 
of Abraham and the fact that he promised them that it's going to last. Not forever, but it's going to last. But this is it. now is the time David HaMelech took, took over and now is the time to cut the cord. No more. This peace deal that we had with you for seven generations does not work and we're not going to keep it. We just, you know, you did not keep it from, from day one. We are now going to tear the pages of the uh, original Oslo and no more. We're not, going to, uh, we're not going to deal with it. That is what was happening right here. And David, when he got now uh, all of the Jewish people rally behind him, that was the time to go and to straighten this, uh, this, this business. Yerushalayim was the strongest stronghold, the strongest fort, the strongest city in, uh, in the land of Israel after uh, Jericho uh, is no more. Jericho, four, 400 years ago, 450 years ago, uh, was destroyed. Um, and uh, as soon as we came in, uh, and the, the strongest, the next strongest city was Yerushalayim. And um, in Yerushalayim, we know that is divided to two different tribes. There is the tribe of Yehuda and the tribe of Benjamin. And the, the dividing line between the two tribes is passing by smack in the middle of, of, the, of the Temple Mount, of, Bet, of, of the Harabait, of Bet HaMikdash, um, in such a way that the, uh, uh, the, 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 the actual Bet HaMikdash is in Benjamin's side, but the, the altar is in Judah's side, you know. So what happens is uh, when all of the tribes were conquering their pieces of land, Benjamin was not able to conquer their piece of land, which is the Temple Mount, which is Yerushalayim. They were not able because Yerushalayim was very strong because the Yevusites, um, powered by the treaty that Abraham signed with them, um, you know, wouldn't let go and they just stayed. And it remained like that for hundreds of years because we entered the land of Israel 400 years before where we are now. And, you know, all that time, the Yevusites were sitting there and enjoying uh, basically, um, you know, no, no challenge. Now, what they did is they, uh, they were not nice people and they stuck their finger in our eye, you know, and, and uh, twisted it. And so they put in the entrance to the city, they put statues. They put two types of statues, a statues of blind people and statues of limping people. And they put it in order to say, well, this is our gods. They're blind and limping. But, you know, you have your own blind and limping people. Because Isaac was blind, at the end of his life he was blind. And uh, Yaakov, after he had the fight with the, with the angel, with the angel of Esau, right? He, he was limping. So Yaakov and Isaac were the blind and the, and, the, and the lame. And they basically said, let's see who's blind and lame is stronger. Let's see who's going who's gonna to win this, uh, this war. Um, you bring the, the schutavot, you bring the, the merit of your blind and lame. They, they, they wouldn't touch Avram because Avram is the one that signed the deal with them. But they didn't mind, you know, talking uh, disgusting in a disgusting way about his, his children and grandchildren. So they put those statues and they didn't let anybody in. Now, we will see later that those statues were meant even, it was an active defense as well. It's an interesting discussion in a couple of, uh, couple of verses. But, uh, so they put it there, and they said, you know, David is not, uh, and what they wrote on those statues, they wrote the treaty, the, the, ver the, the language of the treaty that they signed with Abraham Avinu. Anybody who comes in the gate, you know, that's, that's the treaty, that's, uh, on account of that, this is the, the condition to allow you in, you have to keep this treaty. So when David and all of his people came, and they came with all armed to the teeth and not, uh, not coming to drink, uh, you know, uh, tea, tea time in the afternoon. Um, they, they said, you ain't coming here. Now, David was, you know, couldn't stand this brazen, this chutzpah, this behavior of those Yevusites. 
Vailkot David and Metsudat Zion Yir David. So that David is taking Metsudat Zion, it's the fort of Zion. Fort of Zion is a, a very big fort that uh, that became part of the the strongest uh, the strongest part of the city of the city of David, Ir David. We know where that is. This is uh, when you go out from the uh, Shara Spot, from the uh, how do you call Shara Spot, the Dungate. the Dungate. You go and you go straight. Uh, you go to to Ir David. Um, they, they they are beautiful, beautiful archaeological digs over there in the museum. Very highly recommend to those of you who were not there yet. Um, it's a must see. But that is where, and part of that, you will see Metsudat David. You will see the fort that David Amelech took, uh, and that became the city of David. Um, so Metsudat Sion, Metsudat Sion, yes, Metsudat Sion. Uh, it was called afterwards uh, Metsudat David. Uh, it's not the same. It's not Migdal David. It's not the Tower of David that was built. And much later, uh, a thousand years later, by the Turks, um, you know, uh, it's it's not the same as the, the Tower of David, um, Citadel, whatever you call it. But uh, so, so David, so first he took that fort, which was not the actual city, and then he is offering a prize. David so uh, so David is offering a prize. He who is going to be able to uh, break those statues in the entrance to the city that David hates very much, uh, that are standing there, and those statues are declaring that no, no one is, uh, no one is, is, is going to uh, is going to come here. Right, that, 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 that's what they are declaring. Um, so he was, so David is offering a a, a prize for that, and uh, uh, Yoav ended up uh, answering the call, and um, and and um, I'll describe to you in a, maybe next time. It's a it's it's a long discussion of exactly what Yoav did and how he did it, and uh, and and what uh, what was going on over there. But um, suffice it to say that there was a, a, an engineering marvel over there that was, um, was uh, connected to the water supply. The Tsinor is the docket, is, is, the, is the, the conduit, is the, ch the channel, the, the canal, the duct that, that was uh, bringing water to the city. That's the Tsinor. And uh, it's, a, it's an engineering marvel which we'll discuss later. I said Rabbi is here, so uh, we'll finish for now. Um, and we'll continue next time.